guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a haul Q&A video because I always receive DMs from you guys about haul life. So I decided to collate all the questions via this Instagram Q&A box on Instagram. And today I'm going to answer all of them. Oh, I just saw a very scary lightning. Okay, so the thing is, it's raining right now. Woke up early this morning and set up my entire camera setup and then it started raining but yeah there may be occasional thunders here and there throughout today's video. Okay without further ado I'm gonna jump right into the first question which is is there a need to stay in hall? So I think this really depends on a few different factors. So firstly where you stay. If you stay very far from NTU there may be a real need to stay in hall unless you don't mind doing the traveling because personally I stay in the east and it's one of the huge reasons why I choose to stay in hall because traveling to NTU is just so inconvenient. People always call it COD right? Journey to the West is literally so far away so personally that's a very big reason why I decided to stay in hall. But also if you stay really near to school and maybe you have the budget to stay in hall and you just really want the uni hall experience then you may also decide to stay in hall. So I feel like there's a few different factors for you to consider how far or near you stay from uni, um, whether you want the hall experience. Although I would say that it may be slightly different now during COVID. And also if you want to make new friends in uni, staying in hall could be an easy way to find new friends. Which leads me to my next question which is, is it worth it during COVID? Personally, I think it's worth it because for me, my lectures are online but my tutorials are physical so they are in person, face to face and I actually have face to face tutorials almost every day so I can't imagine having to travel from my house to NTU and then NTU back to my house almost every day um, yeah, so for me, I think it's worth it because I stay in the east um, so actually, I have a funny story. Okay, not very funny if you're him, but I have a classmate from Wikiwi. He stays in Tampines and he didn't choose to stay in hall because he thought, I have COVID, online classes, not very worth it to stay in hall, right? And then he didn't know that there was going to be so many face-to-face -face tutorials. So he really regrets it because the commute is really crazy. And in semester two of year one, he tried to apply for hall because he's like done traveling, but he didn't get the hall room. So yeah, that's just something to consider if you stay really deep into the east you may want to consider staying in hall. How does the hall application work? Um, so if I remember correctly, in year one, during the hall application period, you have to indicate the type of room you prefer. So single room, double room, aircon room, non-aircon room, uh, those special unit where there's a toilet inside or whatever. You have to indicate your preference for the type of room. And then in year one, you cannot choose your hall. Yeah. I think unless you have like friends that can pull you in but most of the time you cannot choose your hall and it's kind of allocated to you randomly. So yeah, you can choose a preferred room type but you cannot choose which hall you stay in. So for me, I indicated single aircon room and I ended up getting a single non-aircon room in Banyan Hall. And I remember when I first saw that I got into Banyan Hall, I went to look it up on Google Maps and I was like, oh, so far from Wee because on the map Banyan is like here and Wee is like here or something. It's like, kind of far. So I was kind of like, huh? I really hope that my hall will be near Wee Kim Wee. Now looking back, I really don't mind at all because it's really not that far because there's the campus bus which is free by the way. So yeah, I don't really mind anymore. Oh by the way, I didn't mention but I first stayed in Banyan Hall and then I think second week of year one semester two, I transferred to Binjai Hall. So yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about that later in subsequent questions. Okay, next question is what are your hall essentials or what do you recommend bringing to hall? Okay, so first I'm going to start with the standard list before I go to my personalized list, okay? So firstly, you have to bring a router because I, I, I really don't know the technical terms but basically in hall, if you want to get Wi-Fi, you need to use the LAN cable, connect it to the thing and then plug it into your router and that's how you get Wi-Fi. So definitely, definitely you need to bring a router and a LAN cable to get Wi-Fi. There is Wi-Fi in NTU when you go to your classes and stuff but in hall you have to use the router. I'll put a picture of mine here. I really love mine. Mine is really good. I think it was only $20 and I have friends whose routers you need to restart every time you enter your room but mine works really well. I don't restart it at all. I think only over the weekend I switch it off but yeah that's it. Other standard things you may want to consider bringing to your hall include dustbin, hanger, multi-plug extension. Yes, multi-plug extension is very important for me um, because there's not a lot of, I mean there's quite a lot of plugs but it's not enough. 
because for me I charge my phone, my iPad, my laptop, my camera, my Apple Watch so I definitely need my multi-block extension so yeah um, tissue box, shampoo, baby bath and I recommend bringing a bigger shampoo or a bigger baby bath because it's just more worth it in the long term if you're staying in hall but also during the school term if you run out of your supplies you can go to uh, Prime which is in North Spine or Giant near Kentu I'm not sure but usually I go to Prime uh, at North Spine to get my supplies okay and then I also bring a basket okay not really a basket like a little waterproof bag to put all my shower essentials so I just put all my shower essentials into one bag and then I'll just bring the bag to go shower and then I'll hook it on the door hook yeah I'm not sure if every hall has that door hook but I think it's quite convenient to just put all your shower essentials into one basket or one bag so usually when I go shower in NTU I bring two bags oh holy I actually bring three bags <laughs> okay so I bring one bag with all my shower essentials like my cleanser, my baby bath, my shampoo, all those stuff into one bag and then I bring another bag with my fresh clothes and then I bring one plastic bag to put my dirty clothes and I reuse that plastic bag uh, for like whole semester but yeah that's for my dirty clothes and then my clean clothes are in the clean bag and then I have another shampoo bag yeah so that's how I do it but I think I'm a bit extra. I've never seen people in my hall bring that many bags to the toilet. But yeah, that's what I do. Okay, and then of course, you bring your toothbrush, toothpaste, detergent for washing your clothes if you need to, blanket, bed sheet, pillowcase, hair dryer, insecticide if you need. Because NTU is pretty foresty. Uh, so seniors told me to bring insecticide. So I brought, but I never use it actually. But yeah. Comb a mop or something to clean your room. Personally, I use the magic mop because it's so convenient. It's like this stick with the thing. <laughs> I have a picture there. And then I have the wet and the dry cloth. So usually I just go around my room doo -doo 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 -doo, clean with the dry cloth first to stick up all my hair, dust, whatever. And then after one round using the dry cloth, I will change to the wet cloth and, doo -doo 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 and clean like that. So. Yeah, that's what I do every Monday when I go back to school. Bring your cup and bowl if you want to drink coffee, Milo, whatever in the morning. Dishwasher soap. And then in my hall at least there's a board where you can put up papers. So you can also bring your board tags if you want. My board tags are heart shaped ones from Daiso. Okay, and then for my personalised list, aka my own essentials that may not be essentials to you, I actually need to bring Nutella, okay, because I love Nutella and then I <laughs> I bring a shoe rack to school because I want to change up my shoes and then my whole room is really small because it's a single room. The single room in Northview is really small. The first time I went into the room, I was actually quite shocked. It's literally kind of like a shoe box. That was my first impression of it but now I am very comfortable with the size. So initially, I just lined all my shoes on the floor and then it got too messy so I just got a shoe rack that can also be a bench. And then for me, I also brought a clothing rack. <laughs> I also got it from Shopee but it's very useful, okay? I hook all my bags there as well to save space and so that my room doesn't look so messy so yeah. And then bring your soft toys if you need like my mukata there. And then I also bring my speaker. It's not here but I'll show it to you guys later. My speaker is the... What's it called? Uh, something boom. Of course I don't blast my music but it's just nice to have my speaker in hall sometimes. Oh yeah, another thing is that in my previous room, which is my Banyan non-air conditioned room, there was a smell in the room and the smell is so strong. Even my bags had the smell and I couldn't get rid of the smell even I opened my windows or what. There's just this, I call it the Banyan smell. I'm not sure if it's in all Banyan rooms okay but my room just had that smell. So I got a room spray as well. I'll show you guys which is the one I got but yeah I got that room spray just to make my room smell a bit better and so that my body doesn't have that banyan smell as well but I don't have that problem at all at my binjai room. My binjai room smells a lot better. So I think for this you guys don't have to buy it immediately. You can go to your room first and observe your surroundings and smell your room first. Okay, then my other uni essentials that I bring to the hall will be of course my phone, my laptop, my iPad 
and also my planner before i go on to talk about my planner i just wanted to bring to your attention that i added a few more essentials so under the main essentials i added new one dollar coins and i will talk a little bit more about that when i answer the question about how we do laundry in hall and then under my own list i also added fan uh, I found this picture in my camera roll and it was when I was living in my Banyan non-aircon room and it was super hot. It depends on the direction your room is facing but my room was super hot so yep, I had to bring fans and in fact, I brought more than one fan. So yep, now I don't really need it anymore because I'm in an aircon room. And then I also added a portable table which I will talk more about later. And I also collated some other essentials from my friends which include fridge and printer and I just want to say that I don't bring any of these because um, I don't really eat a lot of cold stuff and if I want to eat ice cream, there is a mini mart at North Hill and if I want to drink chocolate milk or something, I will just buy it from the canteen downstairs. As for printer, I don't bring it because I don't print many things and if I really need to print something, I can always print it using my horse printer or the printer at North Spine. So if you guys watch my uni vlogs, you will know that I religiously write my to-do list on my planner. So my current planner is the type where all the dates and the months are written in advance for you. But actually I received- oh my god, oh so good! I received this recently and it's the kind where the dates are not pre-written for you. As you can see, you can choose which month and then you can write in the date by yourself. There's also a little notes page for you and by the way, it smells freaking good. Oh, this book smells damn good. <laughs> I feel like these kinds of planners are very useful if you're the kind of person where you may not want to plan every day, but on weeks where you're busier, you may want to do some planning. So if you use these kinds of planners, you don't end up wasting so many pages because you can kind of fill it up only when you need to. Instead of if you have those pre-written kinds and you don't end up planning every day, you kind of waste a lot of pages, if you know what I mean. And also, look how cute! And it really smells really good. But anyway, this planner was sent to me by Nuri House. I'll leave the link to their Instagram in the description box down below so you guys can check them out if you're interested. Oh, they also sent me this post-it and this bucket hat. <laughs> and I kid you not, this bucket hat is my best quality bucket hat. <laughs> so those were all my essentials I can think of for the past few days. But knowing my brain, by the time I edit this video, there may be some new essentials I can think of. So if that's the case, I'll just edit in writing here. Next question. How do you start making friends with people at your hall? So personally, I met my hall friends during hall orientation. Another way to make friends in hall is to take part in hall activities, hall CCA. Yeah, just be more involved in events that take place. I also made friends with some of my level mates. So usually, I will say hi to the people who live near me. Yeah. Or sometimes you just bond over weird things. Like there was once in Binjai, I went to the toilet and I was like, because there were moths everywhere. It was raining that day and there were so many moths. Okay, I'm not even kidding. It's like literally any spot you can see, you will see a moth. And the moths come in different shapes and sizes. There was a huge one, I don't know, queen or what. So big at the mirror. Like, ah! Then there's moths everywhere on the basin. Then I was just so stunned. I was like, oh my god. And then a girl came in and she saw me like, oh. then I was like, so many moths. And she's like, oh, yeah. Then that's how we bonded. So yeah. Okay, I realize I talk to a lot of people because of weird insects I see, but there was once. Okay, because I am short-sighted, I'm wearing contact lenses right now, but my degree is pretty high. So every time I go and shower, I'm pretty blind. And there was once I went into my favorite cubicle and I saw a weird thing on the wall of my cubicle. So I don't know what's that. Technically, I can use another cubicle, but that's my favorite cubicle. So I kind of still wanted to use it. So I tried to go close and see what's that insect. I was like... But I still cannot see and then I don't want to go any closer because what if it fly on my face, right? So I went to ask a girl, I was like, do you know what's that? And then she went to see. She's like, oh, I also don't know what's that. Is it a moth? They'd be like, huh? And in the end, I just used another cubicle. But yeah, that's how I talk to some people in hall. <laughs> but my closer hall friends, I made through hall orientation. Which leads me to my next question, which is how was hall orientation? 
Okay, so for me, I'm gonna be a year two next semester. So my whole orientation was during the COVID period. Um, so it was an online orientation. So I'm pretty sure it'll be different from um, many seniors' experiences. It was quite a while back, but I remember I quite enjoyed it. And I remember I enjoyed it more than my faculty can. <laughs> So yeah, I think my advice would be to try and join different types of camps So if I remember correctly, before the start of their school term, year ones can sign up for different camps I signed up for my faculty camp, my hall camp And I also signed up for like some NTU cultural arts camp or something like that And overall, I was able to click with my hall friends better So I think that's why I enjoyed my hall camp most Next question also related, are your hall friends your closest group of friends? I would say in NTU, yes my hall friends are my solid friends I dinner with and I turn to them whenever I need any help in hall they also turn to me when they need help in hall Oh! I suddenly remember one more thing because I'm talking about helping and I remember we always need each other's help with this Another hall essential is to bring $1 coins because if you want to do your laundry in hall you need to use the new $1 coin if I remember correctly because my friends are always asking me if I have new $1 coins there's a question about laundry later on, so I'll get to that later. But okay, yeah, going back to whether my hall friends are my closest group of friends. Whenever we need help, we just turn to each other. And then we always eat together, and sometimes we go out of school to eat together at Jerome Point or wherever. Yeah, so even my closest weekly week friend is from hall. I met her during my hall rotation. And when we have the same class, we always go to school together from hall. Are the walls really very thin? I'm not sure about every single hall, but the walls in North Hill are pretty thin. So actually I always heard from seniors that the walls are very thin but I never really felt it in my Banyan non-aircon room but I felt it in my Binjai aircon room. So I think the fan does play a part because when I turn on my fan I cannot really hear what's going on outside my room. But when my neighbours and I both have aircon rooms like in my Binjai room, I turn on my aircon and then my neighbour also turn on her aircon. I can really hear quite a lot of things so for example at night when I'm lying down on my bed I can hear them walking along the corridor and they'll be like let's go shower or something I can I can really hear and because the room next to me is a double room so when one girl goes back to her room and eh you have a sleep ah, I can really hear everything I think the wall is quite thin especially in the North Hill blocks not too sure about other halls oh and also in our hall room there's a ventilator Thing that you can open or close. Basically, if you open, air will be able to circulate better so it's not as stuffy but when you open the ventilator, everyone can hear you even if your fan is on. I remember there's a girl a few doors down from me, she opens her ventilator and video calls next to the ventilator and I can hear her from inside my room so yeah. Okay, how do you do your laundry in hall? So just now I mentioned about the $1 coin thing. Yeah, basically in hall, there are washing machines and dryers and you have to use the new $1 coins too activate the machines. For me, I choose to bring my clothes back every week. There's also an ironing rack, for my hall at least, but you have to bring your own iron. Are any of the halls haunted? Not that I know of, and I don't really think so because I'm sure if one of the halls is haunted, there will probably be rumours circulating, but I've never heard of that. Are the aircon fares expensive? How much do you pay a month for aircon? Okay, so for this, I'll try and find out and write it right here. I didn't stay in my aircon room for that long and how we pay for aircon is basically there's an aircon card and we top up the card with money and then we insert it into this thing in our hall room. So it's kind of like your easing card. You just top up money in your card and use it. It's pay per use basically. And I remember when I moved in, I asked the hall admin lady how much it will cost but if I remember it cost more than that I know I'm gonna continue staying in my aircon room so I topped up $50 and just put it in and it's been lasting me well so I'm not very sure what is the actual aircon fare but I'll try to find out and write it here next question is what is hall culture like? are there a lot of activities? okay so for this I feel like it really depends on your hall in general the North Hill halls are more chill when I see some of my friends IG stories they look very involved in a lot of hall activities so yeah, I guess it depends on what hall you're in and how involved you are in those activities. Like, usually I don't really go for that many activities. So I guess it depends on how involved you want to be in your hall activities. But of course, for certain halls that are more popular, uh, you have to take part in some activities to guarantee your stay there. I know I have a YouTube channel so I look very outgoing but I am not super extroverted. So yeah, in general I prefer hanging out with a smaller group of friends which are like my closer friends I made during hall orientation. But I was darts captain. <laughs> which is super funny because I don't even know how to play darts but anyway I'm darts captain. And then I learned from my members. Most difficult thing to adapt to in hall. 
I feel like I adapted quite well. There's nothing I really couldn't adapt to. I kind of just accepted things as I went along. But one thing I was a bit scared of before I moved into hall was showering. Because when I think of showering in hall, it made me think of all my memories from camp in primary and secondary school. And I really hated showering during camps. So I was really worried that I'll get that kind of experience when I shower in hall. But no, actually showering in hall is pretty okay. <laughs> Maybe if you're not used to sharing rooms and you choose to get a double room in hall, then you may have to adapt a little bit more and compromise with your roommate and stuff. Okay, which leads me to my next question, which is do you recommend staying in a single or double room? Slash, why did you choose to stay in a single room instead of a double room? Personally, I would definitely choose a single room because I don't want to be troubled with problems like what time to sleep, because for example, if I want to sleep and my roommate is out, when she comes back to the room, I'll definitely wake up. Or for example, my roommate wants to sleep and I'm still editing my video, I want to turn on the light. I'll feel really bad if she wants to sleep and I want to turn on the light. So to avoid all these kinds of travels, I just choose to stay in a single room. But of course, these problems won't arise if you know your roommate beforehand and you guys know that your living habits are very similar. For example, if you both like to wake up at 6am, there'll be no problems with switching on the lights at 6am. If you guys know you both like to sleep at 12am, there won't be problems about switching on or off the lights, you know? I mean, I'm not sure if these are actual problems. If you're watching this and you're a whole resident staying in double room, you can tell us whether you face this kind of problems. I feel like if you know your roommate well and you guys can adjust to each other's living habits, then there won't be issues. But I just prefer to completely avoid these kinds of problems. And also, I think besides that, I still prefer single room because sometimes after a long day of being outside with friends and people, I just want to have my own personal private space. And sometimes I still go over to my friend's room, so it's not like I'm completely alone. It's more like I can choose when I want to have social connections and when I want to have my private time. So that's why I prefer single room. So do you recommend staying in single or double room? I cannot really recommend because I think it depends on your own preference, but um, hopefully the reasons why I choose to stay in a single room can help you decide whether you prefer a single or double room. What's the commitment required to stay in hall? If I'm not wrong in NTU, we are guaranteed hall stay for the first two years. But guaranteed hall stay doesn't mean you're guaranteed a spot in a particular hall. So I still try to get some hall points so that I can choose where I want to stay. And the number of hall points you need to get depends on what hall you want to choose and whether you want to choose a very specific type of room. Our hall activity is very time consuming. So as I mentioned just now, I think it's very dependent on the commitment level of your hall. If your hall is very popular, you may need to take part in more activities. It should be more time consuming for you. And it also depends on how involved you want to be in your hall activities. So for me, during the school term, it's really not time consuming. Only these few days, because we're preparing for the new freshie orientation, then there are Zoom meetings here and there. But yeah, during the school term, for me, it's not time consuming. Do you take part in hall activities? Like I mentioned just now, I was darts captain, proggy for the coming orientation, and uh, subcommittee member for inter-hall games. How do you move your staff from home to hall? Like how many trips did it take, etc. So for me, I'm really fortunate that my dad drove me and my things to hall. It only took one trip when I was moving in, but you know, throughout the semester, I bring in more and more things. So when I was moving out, I kind of tried to split it a bit. So during the last few weeks when I was in hall, when I go home, I would bring a little bit of things with me, you know. For example, I bring one pair of shoes this week, and next week I bring another pair of shoes. So ultimately, on the last day when I was moving out, it also only took me one trip. But I had quite a lot of things. Do you cook your own meals in hall, I assume? No, nope, I don't cook my own meals in hall. <laughs> okay, but although I don't cook, I do see a lot of people cooking. Some of my neighbors are so on that they're early in the morning, right? They're already cooking. And I've also seen a guy cook steak. I was like, what's that? It smells so good. And then I follow the smell, led me to the pantry, and the guy was cooking steak. Can you change your room type during a semester? So, as I mentioned just now, I changed to Binjai aircon room during the second week of semester two. So, yes, but I think you need to provide some sort of valid reason. Someone said, genuine question because I'm curious. Do you wear undergarments in hall all day? I do, most of the time. You may meet random people, both guys and girls, on your floor or in the lift. So I guess it's a personal preference, but for me, I do. Unless it's very hot. <laughs> okay, last one. This one's not really a question, but someone said, it's me, big fan of you. Ah, I really look forward to your videos and a uni life after this tiring entrance test. Thank you so much. And I also wish you all the best for your entrance test. 
Okay, those are all the questions that you guys sent in. If you guys have any other questions, you can comment down below and I will try my best to answer them. To those of you who know that you are going to start hall life soon, don't be scared. And just take the opportunity to have fun and make friends. And remember, of course, sometimes it's good to take a step outside your comfort zone, but don't ever feel peer pressured to go for so many activities if you don't feel like going for so many activities. Okay, and that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, or if you enjoyed it in any way, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!